Welcome to mini lecture 13. This time we're returning to the idea of sampling distributions and how we can infer, uh, work out the characteristics of the population that your sample came from. Now we started our whole lecture course on this, on this uh, probability statistics part of the module. Um, and so now we're going to uh, uh, use what we've learned so far to get a bit more insight into some of these details um, so that we can take the next steps. We're covering two particular topics, the confidence interval of the mean and the con confidence interval of the variance. Okay, so this is a little refresher of what we were doing. We have a population which we want to learn about and we want to model, characterize, but we can't measure every single point in that population. It might be an infinite number of points. So we need to take a sample. So first of all, First of all, that's our population, uh, and here's how we characterize the population. It has some size n, which could be infinite, a mean, mu, and a variance that we call sigma squared. And those are the values that we would like to find out, ideally. But to do that, we need to take a sample, and the sample is some random subset of the population, and we have different terminology. This is small case n for the number of points, x bar for the mean, and s squared for the variance. And we'll remember that the variance could be calculated in an unbiased or biased way. And what we want to do, of course, is from the sample, we want to work out some stuff about the population. So we use estimators for that. The estimator for the mean and the estimator for the variance. So, of course, the variance for the population would be equal to this. And when we're using our estimator, we remember to use the non-biased standard deviation of the sample. That's our best estimator for what the actual population variance is. Okay, so that's what we've done before. What we're going to do differently this time is to actually just consider that we are never going to know what the actual value of the population variance is or what the actual value of the population mean is. Um, we're just trying to estimate it and so if you take this distribution here as the true population what we've been doing so far is taking point estimates of it a point estimate for the mean and a point estimate for the variance but an alternative way of looking at that is to take an interval estimate to say what's the range of values of the mean which we could say um, uh, which the actual mean would be within, with the probability of some amount. So that's useful in a different way. The point estimate is very useful in that we can use that value and predict things with it, uh, but of course it might be wrong. And so doing it this way, this gives us some more confidence in um, what any of those predictions would be. So what do we know? For sufficiently large populations, the mean of some samples will follow a normal distribution and will have a standard deviation of sigma over square root of n uh, and will have a mean mu, which is the mean of the actual population it's come from. So we can take a table of normal probabilities and we can say, well, if we want to work out what the confidence interval is uh, for our estimate of the mean, x bar, uh, we want to be, say, 95% confident um, within that interval. So we can look at our distribution, it's a standard distribution, and if we want to be 95% confident, then our value must be within the middle 95% of that distribution. So that means that the two end tails must be two and a half percent each. So looking at this particular table, the shaded region needs to be two and a half percent. And so that corresponds to this point here, where the probability of the shaded region is 2.5. Uh, and that gives us 1.96. That means we're 1.96 standard deviations from the mean of the standardized normal, normal distribution. Um, will be the uh, value that we want. And so then we can write what we've just said in this mathematical form. So the probability 
that our sample mean will be plus or minus 0.196 standard deviations either side of the true mean of the population will be equal to 0 0.95 and so another way of saying that is we can say with 95% confidence that our value of mean from the sample is going to be within this interval of the uh, actual population mean. And so now that we've written it as this inequality, we can rearrange this, um, because what we're actually interested in finding out is what's the interval of the population mean rather than the interval of our estimate. So we want to get the population mean into the middle of this inequality and then it will tell us what the 95% um, uh, confidence interval is of that parameter. So we can do that, we can do a couple things. We can subtract mu and we can subtract x bar from each of the three parts of the inequality. And then we can multiply by minus one um, to turn the negative mu that's here into a positive mu. And remember that when you multiply an inequality by a negative number, the inequality reverses direction. So when we do that, we get this. We've subtracted mu, subtracted x, multiplied by minus one. And so now we have the inequality with mu in the middle. And that's what we want. We want some confidence interval for what the population mean actually is based on our measured sample mean. We've got those there. Uh, we're using the fact it's a normal distribution and 95% confidence to get these 1.96 values. And then this is the standard deviation of our distribution um, for the uh, mean x. Okay, so that's given us a confidence interval now. Uh, and we can use that to find out what our confidence interval is. Um, that's great, uh, but looking at this, there's one problem, is that this is based on sigma here, and that's the standard deviation of the actual population. And what we uh, probably don't have is that value. We have the non-biased standard deviation of our sample, which is our estimator, um, but we probably don't have that value. So this is great if you do have it, but if you don't, you have to be um, do a little bit more work and think about it. So that's the estimator that we can use, the non-biased standard deviation or variance of our sample. And so we can use that sometimes. If you have a large data set, then you can get away with using that as a reasonable estimate. So that's one thing you can do. But if your data set's smaller, then this would become quite uh, inaccurate. And so we use something else. We can use what's called the student's t distribution um, instead of the normal distribution. So whereas we said it was normally distributed before for um, smaller sample sizes where we don't know the population standard deviation, then we need to use this different distribution. It's just another probability distribution function, which um, some boffin statisticians uh, almost 100 years ago worked out. So this is student's t distribution. And you can see it's symmetrical. And so if we find our value here, it would be the same minus value here. So again, we're looking for two and a half percent on this side to two and a half percent on this side for our 95 percent confidence uh, and that respond, corresponds to this column in the table uh, and this is different again because it's got degrees of freedom if you're interested in what that means then take a look at some of the uh, extra reading resources for the module um, but for our purposes the degrees of freedom is the number of measurements you've taken in your sample minus one and then you select the appropriate degree of freedom based on the number of samples that you've taken. Now, if we look at this as the degree of freedom tends to infinity, so when you have an uh, infinite number here, that means we've got an infinite number of um, samples, uh, sorry, uh, data points in our sample. 
And so from what we've said, we would expect the student's t distribution to tend towards the normal distribution because we said if you have a large sample, you can just use the estimator for the population standard deviation. And that's what we see here. As the degrees of freedom gets larger, then this does in fact um, tend to 1.96, which is what we had for the normal distribution. So that's given us the tools to find a confidence interval for the uh, mean of the population. And we can do it for the two cases. You either have the standard deviation of the actual population, or if you don't have that, you've just got the standard deviation of your sample, there's still a way that you can work that out. And that's really great. Uh, we'd like to be able to do the same thing with the variance. Obviously, we've got a point estimate for the variance, which is our non-biased um, variance of the sample. We'd like to know what the confidence interval for the variance is. Now, whereas we found the confidence interval for the mean based on, uh, in the first place, based on a normal distribution, um, again, for the variance, you don't get a normal distribution. We have something called the chi-squared distribution. Uh, this symbol here is what we call chi-squared. And chi-squared is a random variable defined by this. So it's n minus 1, n number of data points in our sample, multiplied by s squared, that's the uh, non-biased variance of our sample, divided by sigma squared, and that's the variance of the population. And again, we've got the n minus 1 degrees of freedom. So if we look at what the chi-squared distribution looks like, here it is, and immediately you notice this isn't a symmetrical distribution. So we're going to have to be careful to get two values for it. Uh, we're interested again in saying uh, we have 95% confidence, so we need a middle 95% confidence interval. So we need to find the tail here with 2.5% on it and the tail here with 2.5%. Uh, with so looking at the table, we can see P is 97.5, so that's going to be up here. So that will give us a value um, for that, for our respective degrees of freedom. So that gives us uh, the value at one end. And then we need a value for the other end, which is at 2.5%. And then we have different values for that. So again, we can write this down. Our 95% interval a confidence interval looks like this. So this is our parameter, chi squared. And we're 95% confident that it's uh, between here and here. And so we can substitute in our definition of chi squared uh, as such here, like so. And again, we rearrange it. So what are we doing? We're inverting it. And when we invert it, the inequality signs reverse. And then we're multiplying through by n minus 1 s squared. And that's great. We've got what we want again. We've got an inequality that tells us the population variance in terms of things we know. We know n, we know the non-biased variance of our sample, and we can find what these um, confidence interval values are from the chi-squared distribution. So that concludes that mini lecture. We've learned about confidence intervals, and you can see that we've had uh, a few scenarios where we can calculate those for our sample of, uh, sorry, based on our sample of a population. And that will give a much more complete picture of what our population looks like. Our next mini lecture is going to look at hypothesis testing, um, looking at um, whether there's correlation between data points, uh, looking for um, statistical testing um, of uh, significant correlations and hypothesis testing um, to uh, see whether statements are true based on our knowledge of the um, things that we're talking about.